In the heart of the 20th century, amidst a world of growing conformism and predictable poetic patterns, there emerged a voice that was different, distinct, and daring. E. E. Cummings, an individual who would not only change the way we looked at words and sentences but also challenge our understanding of expression itself. Born to Edward Cummings and Rebecca Haswell Clark, Little Estlin grew up in a house where expression was not just encouraged but celebrated. This creative haven shaped a boy who would go on to become a poetic maverick. But his early life wasn't just about poetry. Estlin showed immense interest in art, particularly painting, and often spent hours engrossed in his sketches, a hobby that he would cherish throughout his life. Though many recognize Cummings for his poetic prowess, few are aware of his avid love for traveling. He believed that every place, every culture, every individual he encountered added layers to his understanding of the world. Paris, in particular, held a special place in his heart. The city's romantic ambiance, its art, and its bohemian lifestyle deeply influenced Cummings. His times there helped him shape his thoughts on love, life, and everything in between. Another significant influence on Cummings was his time during World War I imprisonment changed him. Those three months of captivity brought out reflections that were deep, sometimes dark, but always insightful. This phase, though traumatic, added depth to his writing, leading to works that spoke of freedom, individuality, and the essence of being. A remarkable aspect of Cummings' journey was his incessant curiosity. His upbringing in a household teeming with creativity and the atmosphere of intellectual Boston enriched his early years. Cummings' father was a professor and later became a minister, which exposed young Estlin to theological discussions, instilling in him a unique blend of spirituality and intellectuality. This balance between spiritual quest and intellectual rigor can be found throughout his poems and prose. While at Harvard, Cummings was deeply influenced by the modernist movement. His association with the likes of Ezra Pound and Gertrude Stein honed his non-traditional style. Modernism's emphasis on breaking free from the past, focusing on the individual's subjective experience, and experimenting with form and structure provided a fertile ground for Cummings' own explorations. His deep-rooted belief was that poetry was a medium to explore emotions and self-awareness, often leading to transcendental experiences. One can't delve into Cummings' life without discussing his relationship with Elaine Orr, his first wife and the mother of his only child. Their passionate, tumultuous love affair began while she was still married to his mentor, Schofield Thayer. Their relationship led to some of Cummings' most poignant and raw poems. Their love story, however, was short-lived. After only a couple of years of marriage and the birth of their daughter, Nancy, the couple separated. This heartbreak, combined with the challenges of being a distant father, added a new layer of depth to Cummings' subsequent works. Have you ever paused to think about the visual aesthetics of Cummings' poems? He was not only a poet but also a visual artist. His background in painting and drawing had a significant influence on the way he structured his poems on the page. The way he played with spacing, punctuation, and arrangement wasn't just to challenge linguistic norms but also to appeal to our visual senses. It was as if each poem was a canvas, and he was painting with words. The reader isn't just reading. They are visually engaged, challenged to perceive poetry as a piece of art. However, Cummings' playfulness with language and format wasn't universally acclaimed. His earlier works were often met with sharp criticism, with many dismissing his style as mere gimmickry without substance. It was only later, as the world moved further into the 20th century, and as societal norms and artistic conventions became more fluid, that Cummings' genius was widely recognized. Delving deeper into his work, one might come across, Buffalo Bill's, Defunct, a poem where he remembers the famous figure, Buffalo Bill, the Wild West showman. In just a few lines, Cummings brings Bill back to life, painting a vivid picture of him on his stallion. The poem concludes with a reflection on mortality, leaving readers in contemplative silence. It's a testament to Cummings' ability to condense profound reflections on life and death into concise and impactful verses. Another pivotal experience was Cummings' second visit to Paris in the 1920s. The city was a melting pot of artists, writers, and intellectuals. For Cummings, who already had an inclination towards the bohemian, Paris was paradise. It was here that he had a chance encounter with James Joyce, another titan of modernist literature. The two shared mutual admiration, with Cummings later penning an essay praising Joyce's Ulysses. The Great Depression era profoundly impacted Cummings. 
Economic hardships, societal shifts, and personal losses made him introspect deeper. His writings from this period mirror the gloom and uncertainty of the times but also shimmer with hope and resilience. This dichotomy, of dark and light, despair and hope, is beautifully encapsulated in his quote, Dying is fine. But death. Oh. Baby. I wouldn't like, death if death, were, good. By the 1950s, Cummings had become a prolific figure in American literature. Universities invited him for readings and lectures, and his work became part of academic curricula. The irony wasn't lost on Cummings, the rebellious poet who once shunned traditionalism was now an establishment figure. But he embraced this new phase with grace, always reminding his audience of the importance of authenticity and self-expression. In concluding this more in-depth exploration of E. E. Cummings, it's pivotal to remember that he was a beacon of individualism in a rapidly conforming world. He taught us to question, to challenge, and above all, to feel deeply. So, the next time you find yourself in a quiet moment, pick up a poem by Cummings. Let his words dance around you, challenge you, and perhaps even change you. Such is the magic of E.E. E. Cummings, a man whose legacy is etched not just on paper but in the very fabric of modern literary thought. Let's ponder over one of his lesser discussed quotes, unbeing dead isn't being alive. In this, Cummings offers a profound truth about life and existence. It isn't enough to just exist. One must truly live, experiencing the highs and lows, joys and sorrows, and all that life offers. Having spoken about his past, let's shift our focus to his works. Though we've touched upon some of his iconic quotes, there's so much more to explore. In his poem, since feeling is first, he writes, live by love though the stars walk backward. Here, Cummings emphasizes the timeless and unwavering nature of love, suggesting that even if the universe changed its course, love should remain unaltered. His playful approach to language wasn't without purpose. For Cummings, it was a means of rebelling against fixed forms and traditions. He wanted to make his readers pause, think, and reread. Take, for instance, his poem, L. At first glance, it seems disjointed. But on deeper reflection, it beautifully encapsulates the essence of loneliness. There were also moments of profound simplicity in his work, where he used minimal words to express vast concepts. Love is the voice under all silences, he once wrote, emphasizing love's omnipresence and its role as the underlying force in the universe. If you're still with us, fascinated by the world of E.E. E. Cummings, do remember to subscribe to Quote Almanac. We cherish bringing these intricate tales of legendary figures to you. But life wasn't just about work for Cummings. He had his moments of fun, love, and profound connections. He was married three times, with each relationship adding a different shade to his personality and his works. His love letters, particularly to his second wife, Anne Barton, are testimonies of a man deeply in love, expressing his feelings with passion and raw emotion. As we approach the end of this journey, it's essential to understand that E.E. E. Cummings wasn't just a poet. He was an experimenter, a lover, a traveler, a painter, and above all, an individual who believed in the magic of life. He embraced life with all its imperfections, constantly urging us to break free from the chains of societal norms and to truly, deeply live. In closing, let the words of Cummings resonate with you. To be nobody but yourself in a world doing its best to make you somebody else, is to fight the hardest battle you are ever going to fight. Never stop fighting. Such was the spirit of E. E. Cummings, and through his works, he continues to inspire many, even today. Thank you for joining us in this in-depth exploration. If E. E. Cummings' life and works have touched you in any way, please like this video and subscribe to Quote Almanac for more such enlightening tales.